Well hello again YouTube world and welcome back. Uh, this is my bike check, this is what I call my Tour de Trance, uh, where I'll be taking you through the, the bike that I've been riding for the past year and all the good things about it and all the bad things about it. So this is a 2017 Giant Trance 2 and it is an all aluminium frame, aluminium wheels, carbon composite rocker which gives a 140mm travel in the rear. Now this is a size medium, I'm 174 centimetres tall which is 5 foot 8 in the old imperial measurements and uh, it's a, the medium fits me uh, very well, very comfortable on it. Uh, it's a good riding position and it's good for uphill and uh, all but the scariest and gnarliest of downhills. Uh, so the one thing that I do like about the design of this, uh, this bike, it's very clean. Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, the shocks that go across the frame. Uh, I quite like how it's nice and clean down here. Uh, and the other thing, the OCD in me really loves the fact that all my cables are routed internally. Um, probably not so good for, uh, for the mechanic who has to service it, but uh, for me I just love that all the cables are kept clean and out of the way. Um, yes, so that's small details, but they're the things that matter to me the most. So up front they're running Fox Rhythm 34s, now these are the standard uh, suspension for the Trance 2 and perfectly adequate in my mind. Uh, they have a multi-position uh, compression damper adjuster, uh, firm for riding uphills and on easy trails and then it opens wide up and that gives 150mm travel in the front. And at the rear it runs a Fox Float DPS with the climb, trail and descend and rebound adjustment. In the stopping department we have Shimano Dior brakes with 180mm uh, rotors all round. So I'm not de descending massive mountains at the moment so they've been really good. Uh, they're really quiet with the resin pads. Uh, the only thing I would like to say I'm not a big fan of is their progression. They're a little on off for my liking. They just need a little bit more um, a little bit more feel. So that's uh, that's the only downside. So one other thing I really enjoy about these levers is the fact that they just spring forward a little bit and make that opening that much wider if you need it. It's a small detail which uh, probably wouldn't have thought about but uh, quite handy to have. Now the drivetrain of the Trance is a 1x11 setup. It's a one chain ring at the front and 11 out the back. Gone are the old school days of 3 at the front and uh, 7 out the back. It just means that there's less chance of anything being cocked up at the front and jamming. Um, the rear cog has a 42 tooth big granny gear and it goes down to an 11 tooth for the top gear. And this Shadow SLX derailleur has a clutch system which when you put the clutch on it locks the derailleur in place which means less chance of a chain slap and a chain being dropped. On the chain I've been running a breaker link because where I've been riding lately has it's been exceptionally sandy and it's a lot easier just to take the chain off to clean it. Okay, so any regular watcher of this channel will realise that I'm kind of in love with the Wolf Tooth remote dropper lever. This was one of the first uh, things that I changed on the Trance because it had an awful, awful thumb lever which operated from the top here and it was just not comfortable at all. So I did my research and found that the Wolf Tooth remote dropper lever had some pretty good reviews. Uh, ordered it, installed it within five minutes and uh, I've got to say it's the best thing that I've done to this bike. 
Uh, it's a machined aluminium lever that's got some knurling on it which makes it nice and grippy even in the wet and it's just such a smooth action. Now one of the other things that came off the bike reasonably early were the giant grips. Now the standard grips are bloody awful. I get a lot of arm pump with them and had sore hands after descending rough stuff so onto the net found the Ergon GE1s and they have been fabulous ever since. I like the fact that they don't have an uh, end plug to get lost when you have a crash and they come in multiple colours as well. So if you're into fashionably uh, accessorising your bike I'm sure you can find something to suit. So off the shelf the Trance comes with knobby nicks all round but I've decided that I really didn't like the feel of them going through corners. They're a little bit uh, sketchy. Um, and I really need that reassurance that the front and rear end are planted. So I did some research and I came up with the fact that the Maxxis Aggressor looked the best bet for the rear. And kind of the industry standard Maxxis Minion DHF uh, up on the front. Now some guy called Nate Hills runs these tyres on his Yeti SB 5.5 so I thought well if they're good enough for Nate they must be uh, good enough for Joe Bloggs and uh, yeah they've, I've noticed an improvement in grip throughout corners and just that added confidence that it brings. So totally paranoid about damaging my chain ring, uh, I put it on a Black Spire Crusher bash guard. Now this thing, relatively easy to fit and just gives me that reassurance that I'm not going to damage the chain ring and I won't be able to get home in case I try anything stupid like going over logs or rocks. Uh, and it looks like I might have had to rely on it once or twice. Now the bash guard is protecting a relatively new wolf tooth power track elliptical chain ring and I've had this thing only for one pretty brief ride and it seems to do pretty good uh, up hills and pretty good acceleration out of corners. So yeah this, there'll be more to come on this later as, uh, as I put some more miles on it. Finally, the last thing I've fitted to the bike is a fender or a mudguard, depending on where you come from. Now this thing here went on mainly because I was sick and tired of riding through muddy puddles and getting a mouthful of water, and also tired of cleaning all the muck out of the steerer tube because that is open up there. It also helps to keep the fork seals clean, which is a good thing and uh, provides longevity for the forks. This will stay on during the summertime as well because it'll help to keep stones from flicking up into my eyes and uh, try and keep as much of the dust out of the fork seals as possible. So there you go guys, that's the rundown of my trusty steed. Uh, it's a bike that's served me well uh, in the past year and I'm sure it will serve me well for a few more yet because I can't see anything else replacing it in my garage too soon. And if you have any questions feel free to pop them into the comments below. So until next time, I'll catch you later.